we pray, Father, that will, that will, Father Lord, bless us, Father Lord, this evening. And we pray, Father Lord, that will refresh us by the Holy Spirit. Refresh us, Father Lord, with the precious words. Reveal to us, Father Lord, <clears throat> Father Lord, the deeper meaning in the scripture, Father Lord. And that also, Father Lord, that as we are studying the life of the apostles, Father Lord, that we may glean, glean, Father Lord, something very precious that, Father Lord, that they learned, Father Lord, through the three and a half years of ministry, ministering with the Father Lord to the people. And how, Father Lord, their characters, they are each individual person, but with all the different characteristics, they were molded, Father Lord. Uh, by thee, and how, Father Lord, they were all brought, Father Lord, into the into the oneness, Father Lord. Though they had a different temperament, different uh, uh, way, Father Lord, their emotions were all different, and uh, Father Lord, everything was so different. But Father Lord, their profession was different. And uh, but Father Lord, how Father Lord, you brought them all under your headship and the lordship, and as a disciple, and as apostle, Father Lord, they surrender everything at the Father Lord at their feet. Yes, Lord, Father. We thank you, Father, Lord, for each and every one. The life, Father, except the one, Judas Iscariot, Father, Lord, who was son of perdition, Father, Lord, that um, uh, Father, Lord, ended up in uh, such a, Father, Lord, uh, miserable uh, way, Father, Lord. But we pray whose end was so miserable, Father, Lord, committed suicide. But you commit, Father, Lord, other disciples and the apostles and uh, other people. There were so many other, Father, Lord, 70 of them were there. One time, and many other women who served so faithfully. As we remember them, Father Lord, we may not be able to study each and every one, but we bring them before you, Father Lord, the study uh, to this evening, that I will, Father Lord, speak to us and reveal thyself, Father Lord. Uh, through these disciples, we may learn, Father Lord, uh, very, very important things that will help us, Father Lord, in our walk. And we may also, like the disciples, Father Lord, we may surrender everything Lord, at thy feet. Oh, Lord, deal with us, Father Lord. Mm -hmm. We are so hard-hearted, <laughs> Father Lord. So much, Father Lord, world is in us. Our traditions, our Father Lord, our family relations, our family ties, Father Lord, are bearing us down and bringing us so much, Father Lord, pain and so much pain in thy kingdom, so much pain and grief to you with our Father, with, with our behavior. Oh, Lord, we pray that be gracious unto us. Forgive us, wash us and cleanse us, Father Lord and help us to surrender everything, Lord, at thy feet this evening. So we commit each and every one, Father Lord. Be with us, lead us, and guide us, Father Lord. We claim, Father Lord, a power from above. Claim, Father Lord, for the sanctification. And Father, for each and every one of us, including myself, that thou will also, Father Lord, uh, anoint me fresh and new by the Holy Spirit. That, Father, I may speak thy word, Father Lord. Hide me behind the cross. And, Father Lord, Empty me of all my worldly wisdom and just I commit myself at thy feet, Father Lord. So be with each and every one of us, Father Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so we are uh, reading these three verses regularly. But the verse 14, and the wall of the city had a 12 foundation and we made that very clear that it is, there cannot be 12 foundation. There, no building can have a 12 Foundation is always one, and we read that in First Corinthians chapter three, as Paul says, there is only one foundation that is laid, that is by Lord Jesus Christ. He is our foundation. But the other, if you see the other translation, it says, and many other places written, the twelve foundation stones, and on that twelve foundation stones, the twelve names of the apostles were written, and so this twelve foundation stone. They were laid on the foundation. But on the other hand, we also read in Isaiah, right? Uh, 26, I believe. Mm, yes. Isaiah and the chief cornerstone. Uh, 28, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Isaiah 28. And uh, 28 and 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, a tri stone, a precious cornerstone. Yeah. For uh, I lay in Zion for foundation a stone. Isaiah 28, 16. So, so I laid for a foundation, a very precious and a very, uh, what do you call, precious stones, uh, tried, huh? yes, and cornerstone, principal cornerstone, bringing all the 12 stones. 
And what was the other thing that we said, uh, said uh, we looked into it? The 12 stone, what else was built by 12 stones? Uh, by, what, uh, by what person? Anybody? In the Old Testament? Aaron's dress uncle. Huh? Aaron's uh, dress uncle. What is that? Aaron's dress. No, that's a 12 stones. Yeah, that's no, no, something that was built. Uh, that is true. 12 stones, the name of the 12 tribes, but the 12 stones that we talked about. There was Elijah. no name written. Elijah. Okay, and what did Elijah do? He built the altar. That yeah. He built the altar. Good. This is uh, what? Joshua. This is Anna, Dada. Oh, Anna, I'm sorry, dear. I'm sorry, Anna. Well, Anna, Joshua, both are same. <laughs> no. Okay, Anna, God bless you. Good, good answer. Good. Elijah, he built an altar of a 12 stone. But here we have a, a tried stone, precious stone, and a principal or main stone. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Foundation is Lord Jesus Christ. And the main principal cornerstone is also Lord Jesus Christ. And on that, the six, I mean, six in each side, 12 stones are, are laid on the foundation. Those precious stones are laid as a foundation on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's what we are studying. So these were the names written of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 12 apostles of the Lamb. So they were apostles of Jesus Christ. That is true. But here we see in, in um, Book of Revelation, they are revealed to us as the apostles of the Lamb. So we can uh, just uh, just to catch up, uh, or we can see this. Uh, it was uh, Lamb is mentioned twenty eight times in Book of Revelation, and each place you see the word Lamb, so there is some is something uh, associated with it. And we had uh, just we looked at two or three uh, example like uh, uh, Revelation twelve twelve and eleven says they overcame. The enemy, the Satan, hmm, by the blood of the Lamb. And uh, uh, Revelation 7 and 14, these are the one. They came, overcame in tribulation. They washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. There are so many references are there, 28. And each reference speaks something of the blood of the Lamb. And so here they are blood. And so these 12 apostles are known because, uh, as we see in Hebrews, Chapter 3 and uh, uh, Josh, Anna, would you please read dear? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession in Christ Jesus. Yes, consider the apostles and the high priest of our profession means of our faith, hmm? our faith, Christ Jesus. So they were bound by the blood. They were covered under the blood of the Lamb. The apostles himself considered the apostles and the high priest. That was in a... Consider the apostle and the high priest. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So they were bound, but they were covered under the blood of the Lamb. Himself, Lord Jesus Christ himself, being the apostle and high priest, at the same time, here in Revelation, the Lamb. And so we saw so many, I just want to brush and then we can go further. The thing that we needed to learn about the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So, and now, as they consider their master or their the, the Lord and the God and the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, as they were covered under the precious blood of the Lamb, they were taught. Huh? They were taught the apostles' doctrine. Lord taught them the scripture. That they were taught the uh, breaking of bread and the prayer, uh, uh, fellowship and the prayer. The four anchor. Those four teachings. The Lord, taught by the Lord. Though there were 12 apostles, but it was one voice. As we see in book of Acts chapter 1, where Peter stood with 11. I'm sorry, chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Peter stood with 11. There was oneness. There was one voice. 
and so then the one the one gospel one teaching one 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 teaching of uh, breaking of bread one teaching of prayer same teaching no no twelve apostles spoke differently they all taught the same thing peter and uh, john and all the disciples they teach the same thing everywhere they went yeah so they are called as a twelve apostles of the lamb so we began our studies with the uh, peter and uh, we already finished but the one thing i was left out in the life of peter as we, there were some important things one that he was a uh, one of the, these are the there were three disciples peter and two brother john james and john sons of zebedee three were the main core disciples that were in a very close circle with the lord jesus christ so they were on the mount of transfigurations uh, they were <clears throat> at the uh, they were in the garden of gethsemane peter was and the, they were uh, lord told them to they left eight uh, on one place and then he told these three peter james and john to come with me and to further he took them and he said now you wait and watch with me in a prayer so peter was there uh, in that uh, garden of gethsemane and the lastly wanted to turn, touch with you we start with new look <clears throat> chapter 2 and then we'll go to the second uh, epistle <clears throat> and we'll start with me to look chapter 22 and verse 31 Thirty-two, thirty-three, and uh, thirty-four. So please, someone read that. Uh, two person read two verses. One read thirty-one, thirty-two. Samuel, you want to take opportunity to read thirty-one, thirty-two, and John, you can read thirty-three and thirty-four. Luke twenty-two. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may swift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. that the faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren john 33 and he said unto him lord i am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death and he said i tell thee peter the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me yes yeah, so this was after the passover and uh, they were they were going to the garden of gethsemane and uh, this dialogue takes place and here uh, lord was saying huh, that i am going to die and all those things and in that reference peter is saying huh? and then so lord says <clears throat> simon simon behold satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as a wheat satan is going to take you and sift you and sift is a wheat so what happens when a sift is wheat huh? the sift is taken out the wheat is taken out and the chaff is blown away so that was peter's condition lord told him but he said but in other words satan is right there peter be careful lord said i am praying for you peter i know i am praying for you and he said when you are strengthened when you are converted when you are strengthened in the faith then you when you are converted means when you are when you when you are restored into your faith then you then the other believer that's something that we need to learn when we come through some trying time then we are when we are encouraged when we are built, when our faith is built up then we must share that experience hmm? any time we are overcoming and that way what happens hmm? as that people are encouraged those who are weak in the faith those who are feeling they can be encouraged that yes Yes, so Lord is Lord is praying. So we, so remember this. Hmm? And so Lord knew Peter's answer. So Peter said, "Lord, I am ready to die for you. I am ready to go with you unto the prison and you know even to die." And the Lord says, "Peter, you are going to deny me three times before the cock crows." And we know the story. But here, this was very. This was something important. The Lord reminded Peter that though you are with me, hmm, but Satan is right there. taking every opportunity if you see something he will just catch you and so so important so that's why i want i didn't have time last time and i couldn't cover it so i said let me just go over it quickly so here yes testing huh trying testing by the satan satan doesn't try satan is trying to get us he is not testing us testing come from the lord lord will test us not tempt us but satan will get us 
He wants to destroy us. The thunder doesn't want to just uh, test us. No, no. He wants to destroy us. But Lord is through the Holy Spirit. Lord is interceding for us in heaven and the Holy Spirit is interceding us for us here upon this earth. So we have a two intercessor. Two intercessor going on all the whole time. And so we are sustained, dearly beloved. And so this was the uh, this was the very comforting word for Peter, a warning also and warning for us. So, <clears throat> so we go to now <clears throat> the second uh, disciple, and I'm not going to go through the list. We already have the list before us. So second disciple is uh, Andrew. <clears throat> okay, uh, Andrew. Who is Andrew? Who is Andrew? Brother Dada. Huh? Peter's brother Dada. Oh, Peter's brother, yes, yes. Peter's brother, yes. So Andrew was Peter's brother. So what is um uh, yeah, <clears throat> something about something different for Andrew? Turn with me to John chapter one. John chapter one. And please read 36 through verse 40. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, mean, uh, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He, he said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Yes. He was Simon Peter's brother. And verse 36, that before Lord Jesus Christ called him, he was the first one. That's, that's one thing. That's a, a typical, a very, very, something special about Simon. He was the first one called but before Lord called him, he was the disciple of John. He was with John. Huh? And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Verse 36. This is John is claiming. Verse 37. And the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Jesus. Why? Because they were also waiting. They were listening to John. John was saying, There is one coming after me. He's, I'm not worthy to undo his shoelaces. Messiah is coming. I'm here only to prepare the way for him. So they were listening to this message. They were following John wherever he, wherever John went. And as this was, so one of, and we'll see, it says only two disciples, right? And they, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following. He said unto them, what seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? Lord, we want to see your dwelling place. And uh, Lord says, come and see. And they stayed with him for that day. And verse 40 says, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. And he first found it his own brother, Simon. Verse 41. John, please read verse 41 also. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Yes. <clears throat> so Messiah is a Hebrew word. In Isaiah speaks of Messiah. And in, uh, in the Greek, it is Christ. Messiah means sent one. Christ means sent one. Anointed one, sent one. Hmm? All right. So here, Andrew is the first disciple that Lord called. And he was confirmed. He said, Simon, we have found Messiah. Of course, Simon didn't go at that time. He didn't go. He just heard. It's okay. That's fine. But he was so much convinced, Andrew, that he sought his brother. What a, what a love for the Lord. Uh, that, that he went. And I'm sure the whole day that they were, they were with the Lord, the Lord told him so many things. Nothing is mentioned here. But we can tell. Lord would have talked to all Lord would have talked about of who he is and, and all every, pertaining everything that will help them. Hmm? And so they were convinced he's Messiah now. He's the one who sent one. 
the, he tells comes and tells Pedro. <clears throat> so he was first to follow Jesus. First one. I was always thinking Peter, Peter, Peter. But as I studied this, I realized that it is Simon, the brother, is the first one. So what a what, what an honor, huh? To be first one to be called. Lord called him. And they were no, they were and also first one to spend time with the Lord alone. There's only these two disciples went with they followed. And Lord said, Come. So I also see something here that if you have desire to, to know more about Jesus, if you have desire, I think Lord will multiply that. And Lord mm -hmm. will allow you to, to, to come to him and to know more of him. Huh? Yeah, Lord will allow. Lord will never disregard. That's why Lord said, if anyone comes to me, I will never cast him out. Anyone comes to me. Right? And then we see in the Matthews, they were called the fishers of men, which we already seen, but that's fine. Uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter 4 and verse, uh, Matthew 4 and verse 19. <clears throat> uh, Brother Raj, please read that. Matthew 4, verse 19. Verse 18 and 19, please. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20. And they straight away, they straight away left their nets and followed him. Yes. <clears throat> and also in a, a Gospel of Luke, uh, you know what, before we go further, this is something important. Uh, as we talk about Simon Peter, and uh, in, a, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 22, we read about uh, when uh, said the Satan has had you uh, to shift you as a wheat, uh, because, but, uh, but I have prayed for you. And then when they were strengthened, you, you, when they were uh, converted, you strengthen your uh, brethren or your disciples or uh, uh, friends, uh, uh, disciples. And Peter remembers that. He says, Satan had desired to Sift you as a wheat. So please turn with me to First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five, and uh, uh, mercy. Would you please read five, six, and seven? Yes. I'm, uh, yes. No, no. I'm sorry. No, no. Not five, six, and seven. Seven, eight, and nine. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Yes. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Yes, he wants to eat us up, means completely destroy. But it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ that, that, that we are being kept. All right. So coming back to Andrew, just wanted to, uh, there are some parallel. Of course, we don't have time tonight, but we'll, uh, if, if, uh, we'll see later on. Because there are some parallel that goes with uh, what Lord had instructed uh, Peter. <clears throat> And uh, all right, so we saw so far that he was first to follow. He was called fishers of men, and uh, <clears throat> and then also uh, he was one of those uh, twelve disciples. And Matthew chapter ten, Abijit, Abijit there, Abijit, are you there? Your name is there. No, he's not here. Oh. Okay, okay, dear. Okay, Joshua is there. Yes, thank you. Okay, Joshua, read uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. Okay, yeah. Matthew 10, 5 and 6. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. House of Israel, yes. So, 
he was one of, uh, he was along with the twelve disciples. Where Lord said, "Now you go. Don't go to uh, Gentiles or uh, Samaritans. Go to the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house." So he was there. He was in that. He was also took the commandment to go and uh, bring the bring the word that Messiah has already come. Hmm? All right. <clears throat> So we are now want to bring to your attention uh, something important about him. John chapter twelve. John chapter twelve. And uh, <clears throat> Pranit, Pranit, are you driving or are you home? <coughs> yes, Uncle, I'm almost home, Uncle. Oh, okay. Then let let Srijana read, and then yeah. as you as you come back, I'll give you a few minutes to come and sit down. So Srijana, yeah. would you please read here uh, John chapter twelve, verse twenty and twenty one. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, dear. Yeah, Gospel of John, chapter 12, and uh, verse 20 and 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus. No, no, no. Chapter 12, 12. Sorry. Verse 20, verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee and desired him saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And verse 22. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Yes. <clears throat> it's interesting. Here, this is after the resurrection of Lazarus and Lord is here in the house and uh, in the house of uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, and where there was a feast, and uh, the Mary worshipped so beautifully, uh, pouring out the the, uh, the uh, very ointment, very costly ointment, which had cost uh, three hundred dinars, and uh, there in that same time, some Greek people had come to worship at the temple. The Greek was Gentiles. The Greeks were Gentiles. They came, they wanted to see Lord. They had heard. They had heard about it. They came from out of town. They had heard about it, Lord Jesus, in that town. And so they came and they wanted to see. They wanted to visit Lord. They wanted to have some communion with him. They wanted to find out something. They wanted to know. Here, Andrew plays a very, very important part. They came and they told Philip, but Philip knew something about Andrew, that Andrew will be the right person to take this message to, or then they both teamed up together and took the message. But Andrew was the one. Andrew knew how to bring this because these were Gentiles. And they were told before that don't go anywhere, but go to the lost house, lost sheep of house of Israel. And these were Greeks, these were Gentiles. Now, Lord is not going to cast anybody away. But Lord doesn't say, okay, come on in. Um, what, what do you want to find out? But instead of verse 23 and 24, Lord speaks completely different thing. Huh? But it says, and Jesus answered them saying, he did not, they did not ask any question. Lord only told them what, Lord knew what they needed to know. So here it is such an important aspect of Simon that uh, he brings these people. Andrew, I'm sorry, Andrew. And uh, so Lord, well, so it's a very interesting answer the Lord gives. Hmm? The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. What does that mean? Glorified means here? Anybody? The Son of Man should be glorified. What do, what do we understand this? I'm going to be going to the cross, crucified. crucified. Yes, before glorification, what must happen? What do we read in Romans chapter 8 before glorification? Suffering. Suffering. <laughs> yeah, thank you, dear. Suffering. Before we enter into the glory, we must go through suffering. Chapter Romans chapter 8, we must read tonight. Uh, Romans chapter 8, read tonight. 
the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified verily very less unto you except a corn of it fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal if any man serve me let him follow me and where i am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor now is my soul troubled and what shall i say father save me from this hour but for this cause came i into this hour something very lord speaks these are the gentiles they were not brought into the kingdom yet until lord jesus christ will be glorified means uh, go on a cross and in the cross lord has brought two people together gentile and jew lord has also made us a peace but it is through the death of the lord jesus christ paul tells us very well in ephesians also in colossians also he has made us twain one two people one jews and gentiles in the church have become one there is no distinction so in other words rich and poor become one there is no distinction black or white anything there should no there is no difference but here is the jews and gentiles jews were the chosen race gentiles were the outcasts in the darkness of course jews were also in darkness but putting faith in the lord jesus christ they are both together so here lord reveals the plan for the gentiles andrew was very key person this is only written in uh, gospel of john about andrew that philip and uh, andrew actually philip comes and tells andrew philip knew something about he, he must have some insight that andrew will know the right way to put this thing together and here lord then say okay bring the greeks uh, greeks those who wants to see me and i'll talk to them but lord tells everybody so disciples heard it that unless i go to the cross then the glorification will come unless the corn of it dies falls into the ground and dies it brings forth fruit unless lord will die then only the what will be the fruit the eternal life for you and for me that's a fruit we are the fruit of lord suffering dying burning and resurrection right so this was very important aspect in the life of andrew and john has taken time to record it <clears throat> also um, he was also present andrew was also present at the time of uh, resurrection also john 20 john chapter 20 i brother krishna please read john chapter 20 verse 19 uh, it's it's a long passage 19 through uh, 25 then the same day at evening being the the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the jews came jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them peace be unto you and when he had said so said he showed unto him them his hands and his side then were the disciples glad when they saw the lord then said jesus to them again peace be unto you as my father had sent me even so send i you and when he had said this he breathed on them and said unto them receive ye the holy ghost whosoever sins ye remit they are remitted unto them and whosoever sins they retain they are retained yes so here at the same evening right the, the resurrection evening uh, the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the jews so we don't have the specific name but mark chapter 16 so i just wanted to bring you to the thought that all the disciples were present at that evening in the house hmm? and mark chapter 16 and uh, verse 14 that number is given here 
please read uh, 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 dipti mark 16 verse 14 afterward he appeared unto the leaven as they sat at meal and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was raised up yes lord lord scolded them hmm? lord rebuked them for the uh, for the disbelief hardness of their heart can you believe that hardness of heart on the red day of resurrection the disciples were in that where do we feel many times we enter into the house of the lord uh, with this bitterness hardness of heart all those things and just to have i'm talking about all of us hmm? all of us we have to see that we have to see that we have to examine our life here in the evening time uh, because the disbelief the um, mary magdalene and salome and so many women that saw and they come and they came and told the disciples but they didn't believe the two disciples cleopas the name is mentioned cleopas in luke luke's gospel chapter 24 and the partner with cleopas they were they were going to home that uh, name of the, the village village called emos it's a full, six furlong from jerusalem very close by very close by and they were walking home and they they were also they were also hard hearted they didn't believe they didn't believe and lord opened their eyes and then they believed and so lord upbraided them scolded them for their unbelief and hardness of heart <clears throat> yeah and they were not believing yeah and which had seen him after he was risen so here 11 is mentioned that means simon was i mean sorry andrew was i'm just getting the both brothers name mixed up andrew andrew was there uh, and this was very very important to note uh, the 11 disciples uh, that that uh, because here now lord reminded them i am alive and so now they are, now they believe they see and they believe <clears throat> okay and um, so that one is there and then he was also we we saw that yes he is present at the post resurrection and then mark 20 uh, matthew 28 matthew 28 and i am trying to keep is a pranit home now uh, srijana yes yeah, yeah, i'm home yes yeah, okay oh, okay uh, I hope you are settled down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Matthew twenty-eight, uh, Pranit. Matthew twenty-eight, and uh, <clears throat> verse sixteen through twenty. Okay. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had anointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, "All the power is given unto me in heaven and in earth." go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whose whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world amen yes so he was simon was there when the great commission great commission was given when i came here uh in 72 uh there was this uh, uh great commission movement started about taking the gospel and and taking gospel to the foreign land of course it was going on but it was started uh i think i saw it, i heard this uh, in a methodist church uh, there was a in a i think i came in 72 so it started in 70s in 70 or maybe earlier than that but i i heard the church where we were going that they were they were encouraging people to go uh, <clears throat> as a pastors or as a teachers and things like that so called great commission so here this is a great commission uh, to to from, from the lord jesus christ as uh, before he ascended into into the heaven so simon was pre- uh, um, andrew was present at that time all right and so and then of course uh, we uh, we can just turn few pages and book of acts that uh, chapter 1 book of acts chapter 1 and uh, <clears throat> verse 8 and 9 verse 8 and 
Is it? Yeah, Samuel, uh, Book of Acts, chapter one. But he shall receive. But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Yes. So here. All the eleven disciples were present when Lord was ascended. So he was a witness. He was a witness of the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> It's very important. These were the these were the criteria. Certain criteria was there, and we already talked about it. To being uh, as a, as to to be apostle, huh? that uh, that they should be at a, they should have witnessed. They should have been with him, and uh, where, where they were should be there. At the last Pass Supper and all those things, but this was one of the criteria. Ascension when he went up into heaven. Did you did you face? Did you did you face? <clears throat> all right. Now we'll uh, we have <clears throat> and uh, um, yes, uh, one of the thing. Uh, Nisi, would you please uh, turn with me to Gospel of John, and we'll just. Uh, Yeah, I just take the last one of uh, what he did. Uh, something very nice he did. Uh, Andrew, Nisi, turn with me to John chapter six, the story of a five thousand. John chapter six, and please read verse eight and nine. Example. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. said unto him there is a lad here which which have five which had five bear barley leaves and two small fishes but what are they among so many yes he was a research, he found out huh? philip philip said lord 200 pennies worth right philip said lord we are the apparent philip knew that uh, juda has a bag and has a 200 penny Uh, I'm sorry, two hundred coins, but uh, and uh, and uh, is that that much bread? That money will not even buy enough bread for all these people. Huh? But Andrew, how did he know among five thousand people? Maybe the lad came forward, but anyway, but Andrew is the one who brings this lad and brings this news to the Lord. Lord, we have here a young young boy with uh, five loaves, barley loaves, and two fishes. And Lord, that was enough. Lord knew it, but He wanted to. Uh, if you, you know, we don't need to go get in the detail of it. But it is Andrew who brings this. So it was Andrew at the at in the in the time at the in a Bethany in the house of Mary, where the Greeks had come to Jerusalem and they wanted to see the Lord. We saw that, right? It was Andrew who who brought them. But the Lord told them the whole story of His death. Burial and resurrection is going to bring Jews and Gentiles together, become make them one. And now here is a John, um, John chapter six is uh, instead of five thousand, Andrew is the one brings this lad. Nobody else. Andrew is the one. He was a resourceful person, looking after things. Uh, Philip is only talking about money and buying and all those things. You know, they they are different people. They are different temperament, different uh, thinking, but uh, they are all in training. But here, Simon, I'm mean, sorry, Andrew is. Uh, uh, you can see some uh, what do you call some uniqueness. Uh, it's some unique, uh, unique characteristic. Um, something that was resourceful. Um, always thinking about Lord is. Uh, these are people are here, and what is Lord is going to do? Um, okay, so we see that he was a resourceful man. uh and uh, so i believe that's uh, yeah will so will will uh, and then we also know that uh, simon and peter and uh, and andrew they were partner with them james and john we already know that we have seen that uh, so now let's turn to <clears throat> and uh, uh there are Some uh, 
what do you call uh, uh, commentator in the church history has mentioned that uh, uh, that he went all the way to Greece and Asia Minor and he all the way went to Russia. That's what the church history says. We have some uh, some commentators have brought that thought. I mean, brought that uh, information. And then seventh century suggests that Andrew, Andrew Simon Andrew. I'm sorry, Andrew was uh, was crucified on an axe-shaped cross. Axe-shaped cross. I think that would be very very harsh, very very cruel. That was also by the Roman counselor. They were very they were very very harsh in punishment. One of the punishment, I'll tell you, where we see Paul writes in Book of Acts, just since I remember that, in Paul writes in Book of Acts, oh, who can deliver me from the body of sin, right? Anybody can uh, help me find that? Uh, if you can. Who can deliver me from the body of this sin? Paul says that, right? Uh, in Romans, he says, Can anybody find for me? It shows how you um, can deliver me from the body of sin. Romans, Romans chapter seven. seven. Okay, please read for me. Seven and twenty-four. Okay, please read. Oh, wretched. wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Yes, body of this death. Yes, body of this death. I'm sorry, not body of sin. Body of this death. Huh? Who should deliver me? And so the Romans were so cruel and so bad that if the if the what do you call this uh, uh, prisoner uh, that has committed very very bad crime, they will have the dead prisoner that has been dead for some time. They will have this person, the the live prisoner lie down face to face, touching nose and eyes and lips and everything and tie them together. And this man, this man who's alive is tied down face to face. He will die with that, all that, uh, you know, infection, all this thing, but the, but the bad, bad smell, they were so cruel. And so Paul is saying, this is how the scene is, how bad the scene is. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of sin? Yeah. So this was so here there the uh, the commentator have said that he was crucified on a X shaped uh, cross. That's very 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 sad. Can you imagine? Yes. <clears throat> so as the disciples, huh, the disciples, he gave his life for the Lord. He gave his life for the Lord. You will see each disciples. They were, they were somehow they suffered so much. They said, most of them were martyred. Most of them, except John, I believe, only except one or two or three, maybe. Except John. Except John. Uh, yeah, we will. We'll come to that. All right. So we are we are done. Uh, we are completing. There are so many things, but these are the most important uh, passages that I had. Uh, taken it out. So as we now look at the uh, next uh, set of disciples, as we go to the list, you know, it says uh, uh, the Lord spoke to them, um, to Andrew and uh, Simon, Simon, Peter and Andrew, that come and uh, uh, follow me. And then as he went further down, who did he saw? As Lord went further down, we saw that, right? Who did you see? Philip. I guess we can look at, uh, yes, somebody is saying it. Brother, after Andrew, right? John uh, after and James. Philip, yes. right? Philip. John and James. No. I want to see, look, uh, we, yeah. <clears throat> Brother, uh, first John 43. Go ahead. Which one? I might have missed the context. Like uh, I, I'm thinking that like after he no. found, I, I'm looking for the reference. I know that 
the next one was a John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were they, they were just nearby. Uh, they were mending their net. It, uh, the account is in Luke chapter five that uh, they were mending their they were mending their nets. And as Lord called uh, uh, Simon, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, Luke Luke chapter five. Uh, <clears throat> as Peter, Lord called Peter and Simon, and then brother jo uh, brother uh, Raj, please read verse nine. Luke chapter 5, verse 9, 10, 11. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Yes, so calls them also, James and John, sons of Zebedee. And they... Forsook, they left the father and the servants and the net and fish and everything and follow the Lord. They, they follow the Lord. So we'll, uh, we'll just take both the brothers together and I think we can, we, we, we can, we can do that. So I'll, I'll, we'll take uh, first uh, John, I'm sorry, first we'll take James and most of the things are very similar for both the brothers, but there's few things that are separate, so we'll, we'll take that separately. So here, first thing in uh, John, we see that uh, they were uh, uh, they were the sons uh, uh, sons of Zebedee, both brothers. And uh, <clears throat> so we talk, we take the James first, and then we'll take the John. And so Mark chapter three verse seventeen. And you see, Mark chapter three. Lord gives them another name. John chapter three. Ma I'm sorry, Mark. Mark chapter 3 and verse 17. Verse 16 and 17. Yes, uncle. Yes, uncle. Mark chapter 3, uh, verse 16 and 17. And Simon, he surnamed Peter, and uh -huh. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boenergus, which is the son of thunder. Yes. Sons of Thunder, yes, Bonerges. So Lord gave them name. There is a reason for it. Hmm? We will come to that. There is a reason for it. All right. Also, we are talking about uh, uh, every time you see James and John, they are mentioned side by side, side by side. So, but 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 we have many other things as different for John. Okay. And then also uh, uh, Galatians chapter two. I'm sorry. They were, their mother's name is also mentioned. Matthew 27. Matthew step, uh, 27, 56, mercy. Please read for me, Matthew 20, uh, 27, 56. Yes, among which was, among who, which was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. Yes, yes. The Salome, she was the mother of Zebdi's children. Yeah. So that tells also one more reference, uh, Mercy. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, Anna is, Anna is there, right? Anna, read uh, Mark 16 and 1. Yes, Father. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Yes, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. So there we have the name of the mother also. In other words, there are some mothers who are so much involved in the personal ministry. I think it's the same Salome also, or maybe yes, yeah, the same Salome. That is a, in a Gospel of Luke. I think when we had a sister's meeting, they were talking about it, that there were some sisters they're following the Lord, some women that were ministering to the Lord huh? with their finance, the money they had, whatever they had. They were, they were maybe washing the clothes, cooking the food, whatever. But they were ministering to the Lord and the disciples because the Lord was never alone. There's a big crowd with him all the time. You can just imagine. You can just imagine. <clears throat> so here we see that, right? And then we already saw that in um, Luke chapter 5, 
that they both were brothers and they were them with the father they were the fishers of men turn with me to galatians chapter 2 and verse 9 and uh, uh, brother krishna galatians chapter 2 and verse 9 please read talking about james and when james cephas and john who seemed to be pillars perceived the grace that was given unto me they gave to me and barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go on to the heathen and they on to the circumcision i believe pillars means they were the supporting the church they were the big they were the leaders pillars pillars does what supports the building right i think i like this very much pillars leaders sometimes leaders brings problem but the pillars if the pillars is removed what happens if the pillars is removed what happens collapse building collapse yes building will come down there were the pillars james john and peter holding the church together holding the church up supporting the church everything they did and how how did they support the church what do you think the basic thing that they did what do you think looking at the apostles life how did they kept how did they support the church how did they kept the church together what is the basic what is the most important thing they would be doing huh fellowship no fellowship and no oneness and no 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 how what, what are they doing what are they doing to keep the church together pray how about prayer brother krishna you said prayer right yes sir yes yeah prayer they were the they were given to prayer hmm? keep the church together pillars yes <clears throat> all right so we are looking at james and um, so they were the pillars huh? he was going there and then um, <clears throat> We, and also we we looked at it uh, there were pillars in the church uh, in, in jerusalem uh, galatians 2 9 and then <laughs> the th- uh, sons of thunders right that were nisi read nisi uh, not nisi i'm sorry nisi already read that uh, turn with me to luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 and verse 54 and brother krishna please read that chapter 9 and verse 54 Verse 53, 54. Luke chapter. Ah, uh, Luke chapter nine. You can read from verse 52. 52, 53, 54. Luke chapter nine. And sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. and they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to jerusalem verse 54 uh, and when his disciples james and john saw this they said lord will thou that we command fire to come down and from, from heaven and consume them even as elias did when the disciples james and john saw this what they saw the samaritans refused lord to go through samaria didn't receive him did not receive him so james and john said lord can we call the fire from heaven as elisa did and consume samaritans lord didn't like that <laughs> lord they were they were they were the sons of thunder very fiery very fierce very angry also <clears throat> yes and then If you please read Mark ten thirty five thirty seven, Mark ten thirty five thirty seven. Yes. These are something characteristic of them. We are learning and uh, Mark ten thirty five thirty seven. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldn't shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire and he said unto them what would ye that i should do for you and they said unto him grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand 
and the other on thy left hand in thy glory yes yeah so one hand there there very good desire huh what lord in your kingdom we want to sit on your one brother sit on the right and another brother sit on the left their mother also came and requested lord lord please in your kingdom do this so here lord to give two different answer to mother he said it is not in me it is my father my father it is all decided by my father i cannot decide this and uh, <clears throat> and then so here they have this desire to sit on one one brother on right and another brother on the left what is they were thinking anybody lord help us to sit on your right side and left side what were they thinking what is in their mind positions position yes prominence yeah. prominence position and what mm rule rule right what do they do in luke chapter 9 with the samaritan lord can we order fire from heaven so <laughs> they had a good desire but they stand there they they're, they're thinking that these are all men like us i'm not say we we are we are not criticizing them we are learning this is a learning experience you also have a desire right yes we have desire but we leave it in the hands of the lord let lord do his work and instead of uh, being judge or oh lord they are being nasty lord 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 do something bad for them no never never do that let leave it to the lord but you don't <laughs> you don't pray or you don't desire like that for anybody for your enemy for your friends or anybody don't have any negative feelings huh? leave it to the if somebody has done you wrong that's fine just bless them and say lord you do whatever you want i don't want to have any negative feelings for anything so <clears throat> this was the right and then if you come back to chapter 9 and uh, look chapter 9 and uh, yes yes verse 55 and 56 uh <clears throat> srijana verse 55 and 56 yes uncle but he turned and rebuked them and said ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them and they went to another village yeah lord rebuked them very 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 harsh hmm? you not know what manner of spirit you are of within you what kind of spirit is you don't know you are just whatever comes in your mouth you are just saying it uh, i think it's is it you have to take a for morning you cannot just blurt out whatever you want Huh? Doesn't matter where we are. Think about it. Uh, Proverbs says, or Ecclesiastes says, when you come into the house of the Lord, uh, have a fine. few words. Have a few words. One place he says, when you come into the house of the Lord, watch your steps and have a few words. Don't bother the Lord with too many words. The Lord knows. Yes. <clears throat> so here he said, "What, uh, what manner of spirit you are of within you? What spirit is you have? Evil spirit. These are evil desires to destroy somebody." Lord said, "No, I have not come to destroy. I have come to save." So we learn from James and John. We can't, we can't just blurt out whatever we want, but never to have any any negative feelings towards others. I know I had that many times. I do. I just have to remind myself. Lord, please take away the, the this envy and jealousy and all these things that eats up. What does the proverb says about about envy and jealousy? What does it do? Anybody? I don't have the reference. I think uh, anybody. Proverb says envy and jealousy is what? Rottenness. Rottenness of bones. Yes, brother Krishna. Yes, yes, rottenness of bone, envy and jealousy. What is the rottenness of bones? What will do? If the bone rots, what happens? The body. Yeah. Yeah. We are finished. 
If we collapse, skeleton, the skeleton is gone. We'll be like a lump. Yes. When the bone cancer takes place, it's finished. Then you have to have a bone marrow transplant. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. So here we learn about, uh, and also <clears throat> along with Peter, James and John, they were also Mark chapter 9, verse 2 and 8. Mark chapter 9, verse 2 and 8. Uh, John, John, Paul, yes, please read Mark chapter 9. 2 and 8. Yeah, 2 and 8. Uh -huh, yeah. But you can start from 1, one to 8. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark chapter 9. Uh, yeah. 1 and 2, I'm sorry. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. Yes. And uh, next verse, three and four. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can be white, can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Yes, what an important thing the Lord shows. Lord shows them uh, Elias and Moses, and I believe this was glory. The Lord was glorified, definitely to the point where they can take it, okay? I believe so. Lord showed them his holiness, his glory, but I don't think it was a full glory where it will be consumed. But Lord took them, uh, met uh, Peter, James and John, these three brothers, three, three people. They're always together in that inner circle. <clears throat> and, uh, and they also had a privilege to see Elias and Moses that they never saw. They just heard about them, right? In fact, James and John, what did they, what did they hear in a, a Luke's gospel? The Lord, can we, can we have the fire come down as Elijah did, right? <laughs> and here now, Lord showing them how Elijah looked. So they had never seen, but they recognized. So this is what it's going to be hmm? in, the, in the resurrection. Yes. <clears throat> And uh, so they were, they were the, what do you call the privilege? James and John, two brothers, were the privilege, along with Peter, to, to come to this uh, stage. So Lord also gave them the mount. This is called mountaintop experience. Mountaintop experience, where we learn and we see and so much. Hmm? And uh, <clears throat> nobody has seen this. Nobody has seen God's glory. He said, no fuller. No fuller. This, we don't see this, but uh, in India, I was, we went with Jabalpur, uh, there was some Dhobi shop, and uh, they were, they had this title, Fuller, <laughs> Fuller shop. I mean, that's where they do washings and all those things. Then no Fuller on earth can white them. White them, yes. No Fuller, they were, they were so shining white. Speaks of purity. They were able to see the pure, purity. Yeah. So this is them. And then we'll come to there. One more place, uh, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And Brother Raj, Matthew chapter 26. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 36 to, I think it's a long verse. So start with Brother, start with 36. And I'll tell you where to stop. Matthew 26 stop. from verse 36. Yes, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray unto And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. 
And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit yes. indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes, yes. Thank you. So here again, <clears throat> I think it's 9.53, so we will, because uh, I don't know to take up, uh, uh, it's, it's 8.53, yeah. So close to that. Yeah. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, just, uh, one more reference we'll see in the life of uh, uh, James. Hmm? So here also we see the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John. And uh, God, uh, and this here at the Garden of Gethsemane, this is the last opportunity where you see the three disciples where James is there. Hmm? He's there. Uh, and they were taken, three were taken further. Again, huh? mountaintop, they were, they were taken apart with the, all the disciples, three. So that means eight were left behind uh, on, the, on the ground. And those people, those eight disciples were left behind. What happened to them? Those eight were not able to do anything. The one, one, one father brought his son to, so for disciples to tell them to cast out the devils and they were not able to do it. When Lord came down from mountain, then he was able to do that. And so here again, I'm in Garden of Gethsemane. Eights are told to you stay here. And he takes three of them, very inner circle, very, the Lord had put his, very much confident. He was very much, what do you call confident? Yeah. He has taken, they were taken, uh, he had taken them in. I don't know Lord's mind, right? Maybe they had, they were very close. Something Lord saw in them. Something Lord said. Lord loved everybody. But these three were always with him. And this was something, this was very important. And uh, this was the important thing. The Lord had asked them to come together separately. And what happened? Anybody? As Lord was praying, what happened to these three? Peter, James, and John. They fell asleep. They fell asleep. They failed, right? They fell miserably. Lord came. Again they came. Found them sleep. Lord was very discouraged. Can you not stay with me an hour? Lord went again and prayed. He came again. On them sleep again. Since anyway, Lord again and pray third time. He came again. He said, wake up. Time has come. Time has come. What else? Keep me. Huh? He said, keep on sleeping. Yes, he said, keep on sleeping. He was so disappointed. Lord was disappointed. But do we see ourselves in here? Do we see ourselves in here? The Lord is counting on you and me. And uh, for something. And uh, do we come through? There's one big question mark, right? How many places where Lord has called us? How many times Lord has called us to do something? And uh, we, would, uh, we would have failed him. Something, Lord, something important is there, Lord. I cannot do this. How to attend to this? As people, when he called for the marriage supper, people are giving different, different excuse. And we, we do the excuse too. He had three disciples. Very con Lord had shown him his glory. Lord had shown him a Peter, a Elijah and Moses. What is going to be when you'll be, a, when you'll taken into heaven, you will see all these people in this glorious being. And they recognize Moses and Elijah. Of course, Moses and Elijah is not in a spirit, spiritual body. They were physical body. The Lord brought them into spiritual body. And they did not talk. Moses and Elijah did not talk to Peter or James and John. They only talked with the Lord. And they were discussing. I don't know if they understood or not. Maybe they might have. I'm not sure. But they were discussing how Lord should leave this world. They were discussing about the crucifixion. How Lord should be glorified. One place is this. And they were discussing how Lord should decease. Another place he said, how Lord should leave this world. It's beautiful. You see this different, different account of the Mount of Transfiguration. This, they, they, they witness this. So you might think, and I might think, that oh, it's such a great experience. And how come they could not do it in the Garden of Gethsemane? But they were told, you pray with me, watch with me, 
and pray with me while I am I'm praying. I'm, I'm pleading to the Father. You, you and I would say, oh, uncle, if, if, I, if I'm given a chance, I'll, I, I'll be up and praying. I don't know. I, I, I doubt about myself. <laughs> yeah. That time is gone, but still Lord calls us for something, right? So we should take a lesson from here. That don't have self-confidence that I can do it. As, a, <clears throat> as Peter, Peter has self-confidence. Oh Lord, I'll go to, I'll die with you. I'll go to jail with you. I'll die with you. Lord said, no, Peter, you will, you will deny me. So ask for the grace. Ask Lord for the Lord, give me grace. I know Lord, I will, I will fail thee, Lord. And uh, lastly, about the James, we'll close with the turn it in the book of, have I missed anybody? Please say. Have I missed anybody from reading? Because this is the last uh, thing I want to read. Acts chapter 12 and verse 2. Anybody that I missed? Nobody saying anything? No, brother. Everyone is covered, I guess. Everybody? Okay, okay, okay. Then, uh, Nisi, please read here. Acts chapter 12 and verse 2, 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. Acts chapter 12. Yes, uncle. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Yes, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Martyr, faithful to the end. He did not give in. I'm sure Herod would say, deny the faith and I'll let you go. Might have said that. He said, no, he was faithful. I, I can read, I can read this. Uh, both were put in jail, Peter and James. Now, we don't know why Peter is released miraculously. James was bearded. Or it's all written in the, in the mindset of God. We cannot question. And I believe that uh, I have no question too. They didn't have question. I don't think any disciple had any issue. Whatever way they left this world. So this is what we learned from James. Faithful to the end. Even if cost me my life. We have to ask this question tonight, each and every one of us. Can we be faithful to the Lord? I don't think Lord is asking us for our life right now. Lord is asking us for a small, small matter concerning the church, concerning our giving, concerning the time of prayer, concerning the time of worship, concerning the coming to the church. Concerning coming to the church in time, coming for every meeting in time. These are all small things Lord is asking for. Our Lord is not asking for big. He did that with the disciples and they all were successful. They had learned. But then they, they, they gave up. All those childish ways they gave up. And they were strengthened. And each disciple, faithful to the end. Faithful to the end. That's what we need to do. God is not asking for much. He is asking us for to be remain faithful in a small, small measure that we must. And Lord, there will be great blessing. Great blessing. Ready? We'll close here and we'll take up the study of the John, the brother, next time. Uh, it's very nice. So, already. <clears throat> so, someone, anyone, uh, please pray. We'll close with the close the meeting with a prayer. Any brother, please? <clears throat> and I'll have the benediction. <clears throat> brother Krishna? <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, wonder working God. God, thank and praise thee for giving us 
one more opportunity a lot to come and gather in your name thank you for helping us lot throughout this day a lot thank you lot for reminding us and uh, helping us to meditate on the word a lot thank you for speaking to each one of us about the disciples the 12 disciples apostles of the lamp and the meaning and the purpose of apostles a lot and also a lot we have heard about lord uh, the disciples <clears throat> matthew um, and to james and john a lot that you have called them how you have called them a lot in their state in their condition a lot and that how you have transformed them a lot and that how they have been with you faithfully a lot till the end a lot and how they have sacrificed their life a lot a lot even though a lot along the journey along the spiritual journey a lot they have lord uh, lord <coughs> they did not live the um, worthy a lot they did not they failed many times a lot following you strictly a lot but um, <coughs> lord but they were but you've been so merciful so grace uh, your grace was upon them a lord you know the end from the beginning a lord as you know the lord the end of their each one of them a lord lord you have blessed them a lord in their their faith was increased a lord and that they have st they stood for you a lord till the end oh lord <coughs> teach us to uh, lord teach us to depend upon you teach us to uh, lord to take heed of uh, the instructions that was given to us oh lord in the word lord help us to remain faithful on to you and let help us lord to be able to live a life worthy of your calling and your election oh lord lord may we may our faith be increased oh lord may we may we uh, do the things oh lord that you have commanded us to do every day in our lives may our walk with you be a lot uh, <clears throat> according to the scripture a lot may we walk in faith not by sight a lot may our faith be increased a lot lord uh, <clears throat> lord that we commit the rest of the time into your hands a lot we lord uh, help us to gather a lot tomorrow for the prayer call a lot to intercede and to uh, and to pray and uh, submit our supplications and our requests before you, before the Oh Lord, um, prepare our hearts and our minds. Help us to gather one more time, Lord. Lord, until then, Oh Lord, we ask, Lord, that your protection and your um, Lord guidance may rest upon us, and that that you will cover us, Lord, um, under your mighty wings. Oh Lord, give us a good night rest, Oh Lord. Help us, Lord, um, in everything that we do. Give us grace, wisdom, and knowledge. Yeah, we ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now. the grace of our loving lord and savior jesus christ the love of the eternal love of god the father the communion and the fellowship of the holy spirit may abide with us all until the lord comes amen 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 amen, amen. amen. amen.